Good day, my dog-loving friends, and I'm trying to do something different here with my podcast. So I'm going to do the podcast, but it's also going to be a video podcast at the same time. So I can put it on YouTube, and you can see it on or, or download it as a podcast to take with you. So just so you know, this is the first time we've actually done a video of a podcast. So you can see my face, or you can just listen. So anyway, um, in this podcast, I want to address a really diff- difficult topic, and that is that difficult decision to put a dog down for aggression. And um, I received two emails this week that uh, really, really pushed me into making this podcast. And I want to read parts of the, they're very, very long, and I'm not going to read them word, word for word. I'm definitely not going to disclose the names of the people because this is a really traumatic thing to go through. Um, the first one deals with, um, and again, there, I'm going to really explain this stuff nitty gritty, but I'm going to read the first one to you. And this is from a, a, a person overseas who says, Um, Hi, Robert. I hope this reaches you before the decision um, has to be made. But I have a 10-year, 10-month-old German Shepherd. Have worked really well together, bonding, yada, yada, yada. Talks about all the training and all that stuff. Uh, When at home, he's on a pillow in the lounge with us or in a crate. Um, He needs to go sleep after working outside. He gets a lot of work. Um, the, The person and their partner went on a holiday. The dog went to a border. And that person also has German Shepherds, um, probably about five dogs during the day with him. The border would have walked him every day and done some games, played some games, um, was told that he was fed alone and was told that there was no issue surrounding my dog and the dog's behavior. That's great. They got him back at 1530. So that's that's 330. And um, at 2100 hours, which is what, uh, nine o'clock, the dog had bitten both the, the person and his partner. They were outside. He was having a bone since he was a puppy. They've always made a point of taking bones away after a while and then playing with him. So that's a good thing with puppies. I do teach take the bones away and all that stuff. However, this time the partner went to take the bone and he bit her in an attempt to get in. um, And I guess this person tried to get the dog off of the, the the, the girl and he got bit as well. Yada, yada, yada. It's, it's a long email. Um, they, they tried to recondition him by hand feeding for a couple of days. Now, last night, he was having a bone outside again in his own space on the lawn with me and my partner sitting outside um, on a table. I decided the next day would be to tell him to leave it and make no movement to take um, just to get him to stop and then he can have it again. So some people are going to really criticize a person for doing this. Like, just let the dog have his bone, da 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 Well, here's a good point. This is a young dog. They've had the dog since he was very young. And I believe in training dogs, if you're really gonna train the dog, especially if you had it since a young puppy, that the puppy or the, the dog must acquiesce to my demands. The dog must give up food or a, or a toy or something like that, because that's, that's what we're training the dog to do. Now, if you rescue an older dog, and then that dog has possessive issues. It's still something you want to work on because there's an inherent risk of a dog having something in their mouth that may be poison to them or may be dangerous to them or it may be just a dominance issue and you can't get it away from them and you have that risk of getting bit. I don't like it. I've seen dogs. A friend of mine, Jimmy, had a dog that had severe food aggression and he counter conditioned and Jimmy's a great uh, protection dog trainer and placed the dog with the police. But um, I do suggest that dogs learn to give up things like Goofy. If he's chewing on a bone, I can take it away. Maya, Boz, Jimmy, Dwayne, everybody. They have to have that skill. Anyway, so this, he says he told him to leave it and he left it. However, he has stood over it, which I knew he was guarding it, which I wasn't prepared to deal with. So I gave him his release to carry on eating, but he didn't. Neither me or my partner moved or got up, but he ran over to my partner and bit her on the arm. I have gone to get the dog off of her so that she could get away from him in doing so and knowing that he wouldn't that he would then turn on me he has bitten both my arms however when i pushed him down and backed away from him he came at me again so now we're looking at some problems right um and then when he came in later and you know they left him outside it was very sheepish and he went to his crate so the question is that this person is asking me what is what do i think you should do with him everyone thinks he should be put to sleep because of the biting here was no growling no lick lipping no showing of teeth it was unpredictable even though it's a little predictable um even though it's something i had done with him since he was a puppy should, or should he rehome him in more of a working dog life I know he is a working breed. He has got an assessment lined up to potentially be a police dog. Now, usually 
dogs that bite are horrible police dogs because they have they're, they're not stable now this dog probably has more stability than the average dog that has this issue but um, people always say to me the dog's aggressive the dog should be a police dog I'm gonna get you know the protection dog or whatever wrong right? protection dogs most I mean if unless you're talking about a junkyard dog which is great put them in a yard with a bunch of cars or whatever lock them up and hope one person can get them out and anybody else is gonna get bit but um, for the most part, you know, we want a sport dog, a dog that bites to be very well conditioned. We want the dog to be able to um, uh, listen to commands and obey commands, especially an out command, a leave command or anything like that. Um, I think I know in my heart he needs to go somewhere else, but I'm so attached to him because before I got him, I was so depressed and suffering from PTSD. He brought me back up. And it, it, this is terrible. This is just a terrible thing. First of all, I would really want to know I would check with the breeder. Since you got him as a puppy, we know that he has a breeder, and the breeder should have some kind of an indication if any other dogs have this tendency, if any of the parents or, or the grandparents or anything have that tendency, if they have a really kind of a pushy, dominant, kind of an obstinate kind of thing. I, I find it hard to believe it was just brought out since he was at the at the um, at, at the, the border's house because, you know, again, and you, you're asking me if you did anything wrong. No, I don't think so. I, did I do something wrong? Uh, should I have never tried to take something from him? No, absolutely 1,000% no. You did the right thing in teaching this dog to leave it, and you're finding it out at an early stage in the dog's life because I do think this dog, from what you're saying, you're, you know, this dog would probably work well in a protection home. He's not over, overtly aggressive where he's just running up and biting people. He's got resource issues, and sometimes resource guarding issues are things that we use to train a dog for protection, right? We want them to be kind of possessive over the sleeve or over the, the toy or over the object or over the person because that's what makes the, gives them that drive to be able to do that. So... Um, you said he's had some formal training in a hall, but he didn't like it. So he didn't, and then I think you kind of go into this, this self-deprecating, um, feeling bad thing, which I totally understand, but I want you to know that you didn't do anything wrong in this situation, right? So the dog has some kind of a, a, a dominance issue. I don't know if it's a nerve issue. I'd have to see how the dog did this. And whenever somebody says there was no indication, no lick lipping, no nothing, the indication was there because he stood over the object. So he was showing you that. And I think somebody who deals with protection dogs you know, or a police dog in this kind of situation might be able to harness that much better. But you're doing the right thing because both times you're telling me that this dog went to bite your partner. And she has to be an important aspect in this picture. And I just talked about that in another Ask Me Anything on my channel, my member channel, where somebody... Um, they had three dogs, and one of the, the, the dogs, are, one of the dogs, is causing fights with the other two. And his wife or girlfriend, I don't know, whatever it was, um, has gotten bit in trying to break him up when he's not there. So that's not fair. That's not cool to put somebody into that. And now here you've got your girlfriend. You know, you're going to leave her, your partner. Um, you're going to leave her you know, in the house or something, and this is going to happen, it's a really bad situation. I would rehome this dog 100%, right? Because unless you, you know, if you were single, if you were a single man and you were working this dog or a single woman, I'm not being sexist here, um, and you were going to work this dog and put him in a protection training and do some severe, severe is a hard word, you know, some strong obedience with the dog and get the dog to understand this, I, I would say, yeah. But when you have two people and the dog has already shown the propensity to attacking the woman in the house, right? Um, and I'm assuming that, you, you know, she's not doing anything to make something happen. She's probably not being a jerk to the dog. Everything shows me that you guys are very kind to your dog. Um, this is something. So this dog has a resource issue, and a resource issue is different from just an overall aggression issue. And if this dog was aggressive, like lunging at children, lunging at people, biting this, attacking dogs, attacking cats, um, uh, attacking you know people who come over, and all these things, I would say put the dog down. And I'm going to go into that in a minute of why I say to put a dog down. And and I I know I'm going to catch a lot of backlash for this, and I'm totally okay to deal with that because. I've dealt with enough dogs in my life and I've dealt with enough situations in my life where I can clearly tell you that if I say to put a dog down, it's probably the best decision for a lot of different reasons. And we'll get into that in a second. So here's the other email I received, eight year old beloved pit bull. And the message, I'm again leaving these anonymous because I don't really want to point fingers at people because this is a really hard thing to go through. But it's also a very responsible thing to go through. I'm going to talk about that as well. So. Um, this person writes me and says, I'm seeking support. Our beloved 
blank, the name of the dog, bit our granddaughter last week. My daughter is pushing to have him put down. We are desperately seeking to have him rescued. The name of the dog is an exceptional boy, incredibly trained. He cannot be around children or other pets. Please help us save them. So this is where the problem comes in. Pit bulls in general are great dogs with people, but horrible dogs with other dogs. And I'm going to get the backlash of people saying, well, my pit bull's great with other dogs. And that's great. But in general, terriers, and I'm not just saying pit bull terriers, I'm saying Staffordshire terriers, I'm saying uh, 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 Manchester terriers, I'm saying uh, uh, Wheaton terriers, I'm saying all, all terriers have a propensity for having aggression towards other animals because that's what they were bred to do. They were bred to furrow out other animals and that's going to give them that underlying aggression. A pit bulls kind of caught the caught the, the crap train because they were uh, taken by people and bred and trained and, and bred and bred and bred to fight and have that underlying aggression and that has snuck in. There was only a certain couple lines of dogs but that has snuck into so many lines and it's in so many of the uh, of the pit bulls that it's 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 an epidemic right you're seeing this over and over and over the fighting dogs they're all going to be in that pit bull type family their courses they're this or that but um they're yeah i know they're great dogs i like pit bulls too i've i've advocated for saving more pit bulls than a lot of people i know but i will say that when they have this aggression issue it's a nightmare so um, now, I, I answered back to the email to this person. I said, this may not be what you want to hear, but your daughter is right. This dog attacked a child, right? If the dog had bitten a, an older person, a UPS guy, I'm sorry, no, no, no slam on the UPS people. I, don't want to, I still want to get my packages. But, um, you know, a, a guy with a hat, a guy lurking over or something like that, it's still bad. But to bite a child is, is really unacceptable for me, right? Um, placing the dog is putting him and another child at risk. That's what I'm this is the finishing of my email. It's a difficult decision but for you, but a clear one for somebody on the outside. And then the person said, thank you uh, for helping us. And I, I was expecting a really bad email back. But I thought there could be a safe place to keep this incredible boy. And the final email that I sent back was simply, I really do wish that was possible. But I've seen countless dogs in shelters that have zero issues and they're being put down because of a lack of space. I'm so sorry I have to go through this. So let's look at this for a second. When is it the right decision to put that dog down or a dog down? First of all, if a dog is sick, the dog is, uh, a dog is in immense pain, a dog is not going to recover then um, I do advocate putting a dog down. If a dog is kind of just, you know, peeing on the floor and kind of having a harder time standing up, no, we don't put dogs down for that. I mean, Boz Man, I, I cherish the, the every single time, even if it's the one in the morning, because I go to bed at 7.30, um, even if it's one in the morning, that I carry him down the stairs. And sometimes he gets nervous and he'll pee on me or he'll pee on Janet. But that's not even a concern to me, right? I don't even care about that. What I really care about is the ability to be able to care for this animal, right? He's not in pain. He's not having um, any real serious issues. He's deaf and blind, which is fine. And um, he sometimes tips over and stuff like that, but he's happy. He's eating, he's enjoying life. He's barking, he zips around the yard. And you know, if he doesn't ch crash into anything, he keeps zipping around the yard. But if he was in immense pain, I would put him down. And then this is why I really resent people when they take a dog like that to the shelter and the shelter has to put it down. I mean, imagine the, 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 the horrible, horrible feeling of a shelter worker seeing this old dog, this dog never did anything wrong, and the shelter worker never did anything wrong, having to put that dog to sleep, having to hold that dog while it dies, and the, sh the crappy, I'm not going to swear on my podcast so I can keep it G-rated, um, but the crappy feeling that that dog must have to have given so many of its years to a person, and that person doesn't have the decency or the dignity to hold that dog to take their last breath. That is just reprehensible. It's just completely unacceptable to me. Um, now, those are times we put a dog down for medical issues and stuff like that. But what I really want to focus on this podcast is the aggression issue. And aggression is something that I've dealt with over the past 10 plus years, countless times, and very, very, very often, most often, I should say, in a shelter environment. I've been in LA city shelters, I've been in shelters throughout this country, and I've dealt with some severely aggressive dogs, some severe behavior issues, and a lot of them can be fixed, and a lot of them can't be fixed. But when I say aggression issues, I'm saying these issues that, that put the dog 
in a, a situation where there is no way out, right? So a dog that, it, you know, when it's touched, there's a cocker spaniel, okay? So here we're going to talk about a spaniel, not a pit, and not a terrier, and not a massive or a course or anything like that. But this cocker spaniel, if you touched its back end, the dog would go ballistic, right? The ball, I mean, just would tear after you. And it wasn't like, hey, don't, you know, snap, don't bite me, don't touch me, I'm going to bite you. It was a turnaround and come at you. And, it, and I'm a big guy, and the dog kept coming at me and kept coming at me. And here's the danger, right? You work on this, you kind of work on this, you kind of think you got a handle on this. And then you place the dog, and let's say you place the dog in an adult home, and the people go out for a coffee, and they're not paying attention, and a little kid comes up and goes to pet the dog, because he's cute, he's Cocker Spaniel, right? And the kid gets his face bitten off. Is that fair? And the answer is no, right? Because what's going to happen eventually is the dog is going to be put down inevitably, right? If the dog bites somebody and then bites a second person, at some time, you know, again, I believe in the death penalty because I'll tell you why. And so for people who are going to catch me, okay, we have DNA and my father was murdered. So, uh, you know, I would be the one to, you know, to, to, to put the bullet in the person, to turn on the light switch, to do the injection. I, I believe in that. Just like, I'll say this, I believe that if I, if I say to put a dog down, that I will take the dog to the vet or to the back room and do it personally. Because I'm not, you know, you know when a dog bites somebody, it's unacceptable. If they're sick, it's, it's not their fault. If they bite somebody, they have behavioral issues or, you know, or mental issues, brain tumors and stuff like that, it's not their fault. But I still think it's better in life to put them down than to let them go on suffering. If they have severe aggression issues, then they, they don't deserve to live. I'm sorry. They just don't. The, the world is not an easy place. It's, it, it should be made easier and easier. And eliminating things like murderers, violent criminals, dogs that bite, uh, drugs, and all this is a way we can make the world a little bit better place. So for a person who has fought for dogs, and I've defended aggressive dogs, I've defended dogs that have bitten, I'm the right person to come to you and say what I believe is right and wrong. And here's what happens. So you take this aggressive dog, and if right away, you know, people will rally around the dog and rally around the dog, and people say, well, you know, the, the child probably crawled up in his space, and the, the child probably poked the dog in the eye. The child probably did this or did that. Well, the dog doesn't have the right to attack, right? The dog doesn't have the right to be violent against us. We've bred dogs. We've conditioned dogs and evolved dogs for thousands and thousands of years to be man's best friend. And man's best friend doesn't do that, right? And so if he does that, I'm not saying, and, and this is really important part, I'm not saying beat the dog or do this or become violent with the dog, because oftentimes that's what will happen with some of these trainers that you see. Some of these trainers who say, oh, I can counter condition any aggressive dog and stuff like that. I'll tell you what they're doing. They're beating these dogs into submission. And it works, right, to a degree. But here's where it gets dangerous, that when the dog figures out, this guy can do this to me. Right? Like with me around, Goofy and Maya aren't going to do anything. But if somebody else has them, they're different personalities. I'm not saying aggression-wise, but I'm saying as far as pushing the envelope-wise. Now with Janet, they've kind of gotten used to Janet, and they know, okay, you know what? Janet's pretty tough. But they, they, they know better. But if you get a duck that has a violent or an aggressive tendency, and you get somebody like a trainer to say, oh, see, the dog is great. Now bring your child over. And the child comes over, and the dog is like, oh, I'm not even going to look at the child, and goes into escape avoids. And I've got no problem with escape avoids. I think escape avoidance can be a pretty good thing. But when these issues start to come out, and then suddenly nobody's watching the, the dog, and nobody's watching the child, and then the dog bites the child and mauls the child, then what are you going to do? Right? Because that's, there's no coming back from that. It's not like they peed on the rug and you get a new rug. But when a dog attacks a child, that's ir irreversible. So that's where a dog must be put down. Humanely, it must be put down, it must be put out of its suffering. Right? Dogs that attack people. And then, and then you get these people you know, who, will, who will defend these two, three, four dogs that attacked and, and mauled and tore apart a person. And every time I see this in the news, I just think, what's wrong with humanity that we want to defend a, an animal that did this to another person, to a person? Just like the same people who go out there and start defending murderers and saying they had hard childhoods or they had this or that or mental illness. I'm sorry. If you murder, then you must die. 
And if a dog attacks violently, that dog must be put down, right? So a dog that has these aggression issues, like I talked about the first one, the shepherd, has some mild aggression, aggression and resource issues that are tied to a specific behavior. And I do think that can be trained out of the dog, right? Especially a shepherd. A shepherd is, is really conducive to biting and nipping and doing these things, and it can be counter-conditioned. When you have a dog, and I wouldn't care if this other, this pit bull was a shepherd or, or a collie, if it attacked a baby, I would advocate putting it down right? Or granddaughter. I'm assuming if your granddaughter's young. I'm assuming it's not like a 20-year-old granddaughter was like hitting the dog with a stick. Um, But think of this. So what people tend to do, they say, well, there's, you know, there's got to be a home somewhere where it's, oh, there's no other dogs, there's no people, and he's got a big yard, and it's up in the hill somewhere. Well, I've lived in those hills, and there is no home that exists like that, right? There's no home that is this perfect uh, oasis of just one dog, all these beautiful plains to run in with where Lassie's running and, um, and no other dogs and no people, no children, no bicycles, no, uh, no, no, no wild animals, no sheep, no deer, no nothing like that, right? It doesn't exist, but people do think it does and they'll spend countless hours and weeks and months trying to find this home for that dog, but it doesn't exist. Second of all, the people will take the dog to the shelter and will say, well, somebody's going to have a home for this dog, right? There's got to be somebody who wants him. But here's a little secret. If you don't want that dog and you can't have that dog because of the dog's behavior, chances are somebody else doesn't want the dog either. So, it, it, and it's not saying that, you know, used dogs or shelter dogs are bad or, 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 or not good. In fact, they're great. Boz is a shelter dog and my dog Boots was a shelter dog. But what you want to look at is, the behavior of the dog, right? Is the dog, you know, placeable in the average home? And that's what you got to look at because you know who's going to shelters to get dogs? The average dog person. It's not a specialized handler, a police dog handler, you know, whatever. That's not who's going in there, right? It's the, it's the middle American couple who on the weekend want to do the right thing. They saw the commercial on TV for the Humane Society and they want to go rescue a dog. Well, shelters need to be very, very um, present in giving all the information to a potential adopter about a dog. They need to be able to tell the adopter what the dog's issues are, what the dog's hurdles are, what the dog is, what the dog would do good, what kind of family the dog would do good in, what kind of family the dog would do bad in. And shelters are inevitably overrun with dogs that people don't want. They bred them for the wrong reasons. They, they didn't condition them. They didn't train them. They've shown aggression. They've shown this. They've shown that. There's a lot of great dogs in shelters. I'm going to say more than half of the dogs in shelters are good, right? So I'm going to, put, I'm going to hedge that bet. I'll say 60%. But there is a good percentage of those dogs that are not necessarily bad, but they require special handling. They require special training, special knowledge, special skills. Now, you take this aggressive dog and you bring him to the shelter. You say, well, somebody will want him. And you place him there. Well, first thing that's going to happen, because I don't know a shelter in this country that's not overrun. I, I've never gone into one where I look and, man, all the kennels are empty. They're just looking for dogs. It's not the case. The case is all the kennels are full and they need to figure out how to get dogs out of there. And the only two ways that dogs get out of the shelter is one, out the front door by being adopted, or two, out the back door in a barrel. And... If there's not enough adopters, they're going out the back door because shelters will kill dogs for space because they can't keep building more and annexing more and more because people keep backyard breeding these dogs and they have no responsibility of these dogs. Where a responsible breeder will, and I'm going to do a video podcast or just a regular podcast on responsible breeders at some point really soon because not too long ago, I saw a friend of mine who's a breeder take back a dog after seven or eight years without a question, without ask, charging money, without questions, without making the person feel guilty. This woman was so amazing that when she did it, I had tears in my eyes to see a person who bred this dog herself, placed this dog, you know, sold the dog for whatever she sold it for. And I know it wasn't a lot. And then seven years later, the person, the owner says, I can't keep the dog and hands the dog over to her. She take, And she's not a rich person, right? Breeders are not very wealthy people put the dog in the back of her car in a plastic crate and said, I'll get the dog a good home. And you know what? She did. She got the dog an amazing home. This person's a very, very dear friend of mine. And I'll talk about that in another podcast. But 
You take the aggressive dog, you dump him in the shelter, and what happens? Immediately the, dog, the, the shelter needs to make room for that dog. And how are they going to do that? Well, easy. They're going to go through the shelter and they're going to find the dog that's been there the longest. And that dog is going to be taken in the back, given a needle, and be killed. And, <coughs> excuse me, and that's highly unfair. So the shelter doesn't say, well, let's get the best dog. Let's keep the best dog because they can't. They have to take that dog coming in and, 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 and obviously try to place it. Unless you bring the dog in and say, this dog needs to be put down. You don't have the money to take him to a vet. I understand. <clears throat> but the dog needs to be put into a kennel. And now the dog sits in this kennel. And the shelter will find out, okay, the dog has reactivity issues. And, and I pray to God that the people who would drop the dog at the shelter would fully disclose what happened. The dog bit my granddaughter. The dog bit me or my partner, whatever. And be clear about that. Because what a horrible shame it would be for that dog to then be placed to an unsuspecting person whose child, grandchild, niece, nephew, husband, wife, you know, mother, father would get attacked by the dog. But dropping these dogs at the shelter is not the answer. The answer is being a human being, man or woman, being a, being a real human being, taking the dog to the veterinarian, putting the dog down yourself, and owning it. Right? It doesn't feel good. And it's a really crappy thing for me to say. But a crappy thing to do is to take the dog and try to put it on somebody else because you can't handle it. And if you've had the dog for several years and you can't handle it, what makes you think somebody else can handle it? Because somebody like me who handles dogs or another good trainer who handles dogs that have these issues isn't going out and looking for those dogs. Right? We're busy training dogs or working with our dogs or doing these things. The responsible thing to do if your dog has, first of all, as I said in the beginning of this podcast, if your dog has issues such as um, is older, is, is suffering, and um, when I put older and suffering together, it can be a young dog that's suffering. Maybe the dog broke its pelvis or the dog has some kind of a cancer that's, that's uncurable or something like that, then it's your job to put that dog down, right? When you take that dog, when I bring a dog into my home, I say the only way you're leaving my home is through death. That's it. And I'll make sure of it that if the dog is suffering, that I'll do it. I'll stand for that dog. I held my father's hand when he died his last breath. You know, I've held other friends' hands when they died their last breath. I've held my dogs to their last breaths. And that's the responsible thing to do. So if you have a dog that has aggression issues and they're beyond normal, right? It's not just a little snapping and, 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 and lunging and stuff like that, but it's aggression. It's a dog that you know if this dog got hold of another dog, it would kill it. If it got hold of a cat, it would kill it. If it got hold of a baby, it would maul it. If it got hold of a person, it would bite it. If you have that dog and you don't want to keep it, right? If you keep it and you muzzle it and you walk it and you keep it on a leash and you keep it in a contained yard and you're sure that, that nothing's going to happen, kudos to you. I think it's great. But if you're going to place this dog and give it to somebody else, no, don't do it. Nobody wants that dog. You know, my, my friend Lewis and I say, you know, the only person who wants that dog is God. And you need to be responsible enough. You need to hold this dog's hand, paw, head. You need to cradle the dog. You need to tell the dog you love him. And you need to let the dog go. You need to put the dog down. You need to do the right thing by this dog because it's your responsibility. It's not something to pass on to somebody else. I hope you understand what I'm talking about in this podcast. I hope it makes it somewhat easier. And I hope you understand that if you do that, if you're that person who can actually put that dog down and be responsible like that, then you're a better human being than all these other people who try to pawn the dog off and think that somebody else might want that dog because nobody wants that dog. And it's not anybody else's responsibility to fix it. It's your responsibility. And you got to get on it. You got to own it. And you got to do that. So... That's, I'm going to wrap up this podcast on this. I don't have any time for questions. But I did, you know, there's two emails that I, I addressed in this video. I hope you, uh, hope you enjoyed it. Um, I hope you um, subscribe to my podcast. I hope you subscribe to my social media, YouTube. Check out my members only section. I always plug that at the end of everything I do on robertcabral.com. Tons of members videos. Members ask me anything. updated twice a week. Tons of great, great, great stuff. You can't get anywhere else. No advertising, no nothing. Hope you do that. Hope you have a great week. Hope you love your dogs. Give your dogs all the love that, that you can give them. They're there for you. They're man's best friend. They are truly a blessing from God to be in our lives. <clears throat>
I mean, I love my dogs so much. I'm so grateful for them. And I hope you love your dogs that much. And I hope you understand the meaning behind what I'm talking about here and the importance of being responsible with it as well. Take care. See you next week.